Every year, a team of volunteers from St John's Ambulance Wales comes to Tibet Charity to teach first aid to the staff and students. It started in 2005 when a lady who was working for one of the charities up here um, saw the need for first aid training and approached St John Ambulance in the UK and it was St John Ambulance in Wales that took up the challenge to supply first aid trainers and equipment for the area here. A nurse from here, Saren Lamo, who's no longer here now, but she did a lot of translating for us in the early years when we came over and when she came to work for Tibet Charity that's what started the connection here. They stay in the area around a week. This year they came on Sunday the 28th of October and left the following Friday. So yesterday we were in lower TCV teaching 96 uh, year 9 pupils. Uh, today obviously us four have come here to teach these 20 people um, and there's another four or five that are teaching lower TCV, another class of TCV today. Uh, tomorrow I believe we're going to a medical school where we're going to be teaching fifth year medical students. There are ten of us in the, in the party this year. Sean is the main trainer that's here today. We then have Richard, we have Lewis, we have Emma and a gentleman called Des who coordinates the trip for us. He came out about nine years ago to set up a link between the two charities. On the Monday, two teams came to Tibet Charity. OK, so Des will be here with Lewis and me, but um, oh, magic, magic Des. He's a, he's a thing. But Richard, Emma and Marion now have to go somewhere else. So I'd like you to clap. clap so we're going to say Tashi Dele. There were two days of training this year. The extra day was laid on for the OBE students. Ladies and gentlemen, Tashidele. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. St John's Ambulance provided a one-day combination course in emergency first aid and baby safe training. So do you think I can say, hello baby, can you hear me? <laughs> It was less theoretical than the original UK course and took into account the difficulty in India in accessing professional medical help. When we have an accident, no ambulance comes, so there's no one to help us. We have to help ourselves. There is an ambulance service, but it takes too long. We don't use it, so we take the people to the hospital in a taxi. First aid is exactly this. It's basically the immediate assistance that you can give to somebody when they have an accident. Translations were given by Tibet charity staff attending the training. Both of them are teachers and they will help you to translate if they need any help. One of the most important things that we try to get across people is the very beginning of the poor the course, just how important it is to um, assess a situation, to see if we can identify what's gone wrong, how serious it is, how much we need to do, how important it is to get help. Um, and, and even if people only do that, not move somebody that's seriously injured or don't ignore somebody that desperately needs help. Students were presented with a set of standard procedures to follow in order to assess a casualty and then work out how to help them summed up by the acronym DOCTOR or D-R-A-B-C. I fall over and then I crash into these three people and we have three, uh, well four of us at the end of the steps. So what's the first thing do you think we might want to do? Would you, would you like to answer the question or would you like to think about why did I fall over? Was there any danger there to you? So if you come running over to help, Perhaps you may fall over too. <laughs> if we find any danger, we need to move the danger away. Right, response. Do you know what response means? So you go down and you shake, hello. And if you know their name, use their name. Hello, Sean. Sean, can you hear me? Hello, hello, can you hear me? Open your eyes. The word, if you're talking or shouting, you have an airway and you're breathing. Yeah? 
They may have other problems, which we will also want to help them with, but they're not as serious as the ones who are saying nothing. If there's no response, you put an S in there, because that becomes shout for help. That airway could be blocked. So what we want to do then, we want to make sure we open the airway. So put a hand on the head, two fingers, make sure you can just double check if there's anything in there. All right, so no response. Airway. Put your hands down, off, off chest. Okay. So is Lewis breathing, do you think? How can you tell if they're breathing? Sight, hearing, and the, the feeling of touch. We've done air, danger response, airway, breathing. <coughs> okay. Right, now it's practice time now. Yes. Okay. So if half class can go out there, I want you to go into pairs. Yes. Yes. Two, yes. two together. Yes. And then the other half stay in here. And we all practice. Oh, okay. So you can feel what it's like to be the casualty yes. and also be the first danger as well. Okay, so look at danger, danger, no danger. Make sure the air is open and clear. Two fingers underneath the chin. Yeah. The next thing then is his hands. O open the airway. Airway back, head right back. Keep that hand there, okay? There you go. With his hands and then. And then breathing. So we look, listen, and feel. So we come up here, by her mouth. There we go. Can you see breathing? The instructors showed how to modify the techniques when dealing with babies. And with one finger, okay, just enough to open the airway. Not. <laughs> <laughs> got her chin supported so her airway is clear. Students learned what to do when the casualty was unconscious but still breathing. It's a big clap to Joe because she's breathing. <laughs> yeah, you're unconscious, you're unconscious. So he is breathing but he is unconscious. If I leave him on the floor like this what will happen? He might choke because he's Anything that's in the throat, maybe blood or saliva or his tongue, <coughs> will block. So that's why we need to put him in the recovery position. So the hand nearest you. With this arm here, that goes up. Well done. And then we get this hand. Very, very gently, yes. And this goes here, like this. And then you would keep your hands like that. Is that me? But students also had to learn what to do in the much more serious situation when the casualty isn't breathing. Okay, so the next one, there's going to be no breathing. So you, you go into the scene, you see someone on the floor, the first thing you check still is for danger. And you check if they got response. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, ten. No breathing. So we do the chest compressions, which Mike will show you in a minute, as a way of acting like the heart being pumped, so the blood then can still go around the body. Is there, is there any questions on this? We want it to go. Two breaths. Okay. Thirty. Two breaths. Quite deep. Five or six centimetres deep. Okay. And quite fast. No more than two a second. Very important that you continue doing this. If you come off, 
then there's a chance that they may die. If there's more than one of you, try and swap over every two minutes, okay, because it's very, very tiring, okay? In my job at home, I have to do this in the back of an ambulance on my own, one-handed, like this. Okay? <laughs> Hello, hello, can you hear me? Hello? No response. Help! Okay, so 10 seconds. Okay, no breathing. So 30. Yeah, keep your arms straight. Okay. <laughs> While the morning sessions covered general first aid that was useful in many different situations, the afternoon sessions concentrated on specific treatments for dealing with choking, acute illnesses, bleeding and wounds, shock and head and limb injuries. or a fit, you know when someone's fitting and it comes in two different types, there's a minor one or there's a major one. Now a minor <coughs> one is okay. the second type which is a major is so there's a major one, can you see what Come, we'll check her over. Shall. Now she's had a fit, so we've seen her have the fit, so we know she's not going to respond. We check the airway because they can bite on the tongue. Yeah, so they'll bleed a little bit. So that's clear. She is breathing, I hope. Yeah, so we're just placing nicely into a recovery position. Don't put a spoon in there, don't put. Mat material, anything in there, because remember, here we don't put yourself in danger. Can you clear any uh, any hot liquid? Can you move the person away from the fire? Anything that says we're going to be a bit safer when we do it. In pain, a lot of damage maybe, but also in shock. We need to start <coughs> talking to them. Calm down, you'll be okay. 
and it's much better if we can get somebody sat down so we can just keep it going for 10 minutes all of that time I need to be talking to him and watching what happens here in case he looks like he's going to fall off my chair is just loosely cover it just to keep it clean and protected can you just make sure people don't pop blisters because of dirt? Yeah, we don't want blisters popping. Another kind of chest pain that we deal with is can be considered more serious. Has anybody witnessed anybody having a heart attack? No? They're sitting up with their knees bent. That's helping her to breathe. So you sit them down, you calm them down, you try and get them to relax, and you get medical help. What often happens from this is that she will go into a heart attack. <laughs> Then you go quickly straight through your, your initial, you check the breathing, if there's no breathing, if there's breathing, you get us straight into a recovery position. It's just D-R-A-B again, okay? But then it becomes D-R-A-B-C, because if this person is at a heart attack and she's collapsed into this situation, you need to start resuscitation immediately. She sat down, I've examined it, I've had a look, She's got pressure on it and she's got it elevated. I'm opening it without touching the nice sterile pad. And I'm gonna put that pad as quickly as I can on top of it. So I'm going on quite firm. I'm not too tight. I don't want a hand to go purple. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our lovely triangular bandages. This part wants to go to her fingers. And this point wants to come down towards her elbow. I'm going to take it round her shoulders so I can tie it by her fingers. How are we doing here? Yeah, it's okay. If you want to just hold that there, then you can tie, you can tie these together. That material is going. And I'm going to get him to hold that in place for me. Right? Yeah. Now, again, he won't do that for very long. So I'm going to make sure that pad stays there. And I'm going to use one of these. It goes across the front, just above his eyebrows. Okay. These come down the back on top of the point that's there and it's pulled back round to the front. Right, so into it, cross, cross over. Don't knot it and that's just cross it. It's because she's not actually bleeding, it is very difficult to do in practice. Tie this first. So if it was a blanket, you could tuck that up by the side, lift it, and go. All right? Yeah, you don't have to do it. No, 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 no. Lewis has hurt his arm. He's having a very bad day. Okay. Okay, so that's an arm sling. That's it. That's nice. So you can think about it like that, and then this comes round, tie that on that end. The St John's volunteers finished off the course 
with a recap of the day's topics. Response, airway, breathing, CPR. So you remember recovery position? Yes. Everyone who completed the day's training received a certificate. This is a video. <laughs> we find the students over here want to absorb the information. They want the information. They want to, to, they want to know. Are they always quite as comfortable in practicing? Maybe not. But as the day goes on, they, they very much get more involved. It's great. I mean, they're so they're so receptive, and they're so um, I think they're so grateful that we're here to teach them. Um, I, when I was in university, we ran a similar uh, scheme going into schools teaching basic life support. And kids in our country, they they're quite uh, they're quite naughty at times. Whereas here, they're just very very polite, very well mannered, and they they just they want to learn. There seems to be an attitude here where education is so important, and they just they're just really enthusiastic about the learning. Every year new students used to attend the workshop, so it's been very useful for them also because they don't know what to do when the emergency things occurs in the day-to-day -day life. They have the bad ideas like when they have an open wound, they used to put ashes on the it or sometimes they put tissue paper on it. Individually, we either pay for ourselves to come or we um, fundraise at home in order to pay for our travel and accommodation. Um, we had to fundraise £900 ourselves for the trip. I fundraised by going to a local supermarket and um, doing a bucket collection. I paid for some of it myself, but did some street collections, collecting in the supermarket and things like that. Uh, once people know the trip is happening, people start collecting dolls from various divisions. So even people who are not coming here are starting to donate equipment to be used over here. Some companies at home will donate money which we've bought, we've used to buy equipment. But donations by St John's Ambulance Wales have never been limited to training equipment and medical supplies. In 2013 alone, they have made a commitment to provide a solar combined power and heating system for the baby house at Upper TCV, and they have given uniform fleeces to the 15 members of the First Aid Club at Lower TCV so that they will be recognisable wherever they provide first aid cover. We come to deliver first aid skills, but our, our people get an awful lot from this trip as well. They go back, they've learned how to handle uh, issues with language, they've learned how to teach in different styles, um, they've learned how to develop their own skills, but a lot of it is just an awareness of a different culture, a different way of life and to go back home and just try and use some of those values. Um, I really, really, I'm really passionate about coming abroad to teach first aid, so I think it's very important. No, I mean, I think I'd love to see this relationship get even stronger. Um, I'd love to see us being able to fundraise and getting money into these places. Lower TCV, they're, they're in need of a, a water filter at the moment, so we're, we're going to go back and discuss um, plans to hopefully help them along with that. Um, but fundraising mainly, I think that's, that's the main thing and, and as much training as possible.